I had, you know, I had, um, I had an Irish Catholic upbringing in the west of Ireland. And, you know, I grew up in a quite a conservative household. I went to a convent school. Um, one of my brothers trained for the priesthood for a time. Um, and it was very much that sort of pre-boom, homogenous, white, Catholic, you know, story. You know, nothing exceptional about it at all. Um, well, you know, I think I, I wouldn't say I'm apologetic for it, but I certainly I'm aware that people pigeonhole Irish writers and their subjects, you know, that they consider these are these are Irish things and Irish writers must pass through them in order to get anywhere else. Um, so I suppose I feel I feel the weight of that a bit. Well, you know, I, I hesitate to say it, but I have to say it in its Ulysses um, because that really was when I when I read that book I I understood I began to understand language in a different way and even though I had read Beckett before he hadn't really been the huge slap in the face that that Ulysses was and it was at that point I realized I really needed to go back to the drawing board and and, and work on this different way that there there had to be a different way to impart experience to a reader and and find a way that I thought even Joyce hadn't actually and to try and try and do that. I, I don't know if I would directly cite particular playwrights although Sarah Kane I would say was a big influence on me who I admired hugely and but that was probably more to, uh, to do with approach and attack and that very surprising unusual way for a female playwright to to go at something and I found that very very inspiring and very exciting um, but certainly the acting training was a huge part of the approach and having a, a method acting training of really submersing yourself in into the the world of the character to every part of it was something that I you know I wanted to impart to the reader and the idea of, of dragging all aspects of the life in and that being the experience for the reader so not just what the girl thinks or what she says or what she does but how she reacts and how she feels and what she smells and all of these things how they feed into what happens and and how all of these things you know influence her and then push the the story forward um, to the style itself, I suppose it was uh, the interest in modernism and and all of that, and to the to the voice as it as it became. Really, you know, I I wrote my way into it. I I started off with an idea which was turned out to be a completely useless idea, a completely different idea, and and started to write. And then at one point, the language just changed, and I understood that I was writing about something else, and everything that I had been trying to steer clear of was probably going to be part of that idea and that I had to try to embrace it. That was part of the struggle of the voice and the language, certainly. I think it, it was, it was character-led. I was, it, the girl was the first thing, her, her consciousness and everything that then followed came from that um, and so the, the novel really just grew from the first page. I didn't plot anything, I didn't plan anything, I had no chapters set, I hadn't any, nothing technical was resolved and I didn't know how the book would end until I was about 20 pages before the end and then I realised that there was only one way for it to end. I think she's uh, she's just a young girl in a in a bad situation. She's she's trapped by circumstance, and she's someone who's who's trying very hard to, to beat against it and and can't because sometimes you just can't. They all came from the 
from the character and you know far from being extraordinary a lot of it was about the banality of of cruelty and the banality of of the horror of often everyday life in an unexceptional situation um, so those everything came from came from her and how she reacted to what came along It, well, I didn't. I certainly didn't do any research, and it, uh, you know, I think research would have killed it. It was very intuitive, and and the point for me was to make it very, very immediate for the reader, and to do that was really about making the the writing immediate and, and internalizing it as much as possible, so they felt the story rather than, you know, read the story or understood the story. That it, it almost came from the inside of them out rather than going in. I, well, I think at the time I wrote the book, I was, um, you know, I was still filled with bile about the church and disappointment, and you know, I, I believed when I was a child, I, I did believe and and wanted to believe, and coming to the realization that I no longer believed, was very difficult for me uh, in my in my mid-teens, and it was a wrench. It wasn't just oh, I have no time for this foolishness. It was something I really suffered through. Uh, to get there, um, and so the, a lot of that anger, especially at that point in Ireland in the early 90s when the X case happened and there's the abortion debates and all of that, you know, all came to a head. Um, and and now I feel I feel much more ambivalent about it. I feel a general sort of disgust for the way they've conducted themselves over all the increasing you know, scandals, sexual abuse scandals, and, and the way they have focused their attention on preserving their wealth as, as uh, carefully as possible uh, to the detriment of anything they, anyone else thinks that they owe the victims, which they clearly don't feel that they do. Um, so it's just, you know, it's a very unemotional attitude now. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, it's a shame, shame on them. I, I do think that dialogue is important, and I do think um, naturalism is important, and I think there's a lot of vernacular in my, in my book that I have included on purpose. But at the same time, it, it, there is a very non-naturalistic element because you know, the, the dialogue flows in and out of thought, and the characters' dialogue and thoughts flow in and out of each other's. And so you know, there is a, um, something, there is structure at work there as well. Yeah. So it's, it's not all about, you know, getting all the right grunts in the right places, you know? Um, no, I'm, I'm very much get up in the morning, get dressed, make a cup of coffee, sit down and work, and, and work as long as I can until it's not productive, until I'm just going around in circles. Um, and so I don't go out. I don't do anything like that. I don't like to have anyone around as much as possible. Um, yeah, it's all about, it's just about the discipline. Absolutely. The only person who looks at it is my husband. He's the only one who gets to see it until I'm happy. Um, but yeah, I, I think Girl was three drafts initially and then a, a further draft once it was it was going to be published and sort of clear up and tidy out um, and I mean it's interesting that a lot of people have asked me about writing and the approach to writing and uh, I'd kind of forgotten because I, it was so long since I'd written the book I'd forgotten and so I went back to look at the various drafts and you know some sections of the book are almost word for word what they are in the in the published final published edition, and some have changed a lot. Um, so it's a real hit and miss. And but I I do that on gut rather than anything else. Well, you know, I'm I'm a, a big analogist. I'm really not interested in digital anything, and I think 
I don't read e-books unless that's the only way I can read a book. Mm -hmm. And I find them quite ugly and cumbersome. And you know, I much prefer a tangible object. And I think there is a relationship between a, a, a copy of a book that you've read, you know, and, and books that I've um, you know, really loved. You know, sometimes I feel like I want to just write my name and the date in it, just you know, so that it's there. So I'm almost part of the uh, part of the experience. Um, uh, so yeah, ebooks, not really very much. And I think that the physical object is is an important thing. And I think a lot of people feel like that. I don't worry about that disappearing. I think, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm just interested in taking a new approach. I think that the novel actually could do with a little bit of the work that the theatre is having to do now with the advent of film and everything. You know, I, I think literalism uh, in, in fiction is becoming com increasingly pointless. Because, you know, if I want to know how the thin woman in a brown dress with a pair of trainers on, looks. I can just look it up on the internet. And I don't think that that's fiction's job anymore. I think in the, in the ways that in the sort of 60s and 70s theatre turned itself on its head and became about more than just text, you know, literature has to become about super text. You know, it has to, it has to be its most distilled self. And I think that's, I think that's the way forward.